Hey, hey, everybody, it's Small G Gate. Those Mitt Romney people, they work like Scientologists or Hare Krishnas or something because this is my um, personally autographed photo of Mitt Romney that I received in the mail today. Photo inside, do not bend. Thanking me for my patriotism. Did Steve Politic have them send me this? And of course, I'm looking at this autographed uh, Mitt Romney. Yes, yes, yes. See? And it looks like it's real. It looks like it's real ink. Maybe it's stamped. There's definitely indentation there. Do you think Mitt has people who sign for him? Anyway, I just got this in the mail. This glossy photo of Mitt Romney in front of the flag. And in his Brokeback Mountain jacket. And <clears throat> I'm thinking about how... Um, if I wanted one of Newt Gingrich, it would cost me $50. <laughs> of course, mind you, Mr. Romney wants me to send him money as well. Oh, my God. You conservatives and your fundraising. God. It don't come easy. Do you guys think I should have sponsors for the new Small G Gay show? And then I'd have to have to deal with sponsors all the time. Maybe I'll Kyle do that. Make Kyle vice president of productions. He's been wanting to be the producer of that show for a long time. But, you know, then, then I have to go in there and talk about how great Rick Santorum is all the time. Hi, Kyle. I love you. So, anyway. I don't know. I mean, here's Mitt. Here's Mitt and it was an autograph in my lap. Just suddenly lands here tonight when I come home from, from the job in the city. Okay, so can I tell you guys who my new girl crush is? My new girl crush is Karen Finney, that psychotic new substitute on MSNBC who makes Rachel Maddow seem like one of the guys. Um, Karen Finney is so affected. She's, she's read like two queer theory gender studies books, and she's an expert. And she is the most patronizing, totally out of touch with anyone remotely authentic and um she she explains uh racism and sexism and homophobia on msnbc until um ml turns it all into um conservative which supposedly they're going to do but she's there now and she's kind of like romper room gender theory and she explains everything in a really slow condescending voice what they do is white people look at African Americans as some sort of other. She's so hideous. She's so hideous. She makes, uh, that, 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 that Karen Finney, she makes Sandra Fluke look like Sarah Palin. She makes Sandra Fluke look like the kind of guy that could go on down and dress a moose. That's how hideous she is. And yet I love her for that. I love her because she is so humorless, she is so sanctimonious, she is so condescending, and she is she has she has so little knowledge about what she's talking about. It's hilarious. I love her. I love her. Oh, she's so self important. She's so self important. Check her out on YouTube. I think she's really spectacular in her irritating quotient. Speaking of irritating, Jane Fonda is going to play Nancy Reagan. Isn't that nice? So now we've had uh, Meryl Streep playing um, uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher, and we've had Julianne Moore playing uh, Sarah Palin, and now we're going to have Jane Fonda playing um, Nancy Reagan. I can't wait for when Jane Fonda tries to make it sound like she um, that it's a balanced portrait that she said nice that she saw nice things in Nancy. I can't wait to hear that song and dance. She's probably just doing it to get an Oscar. Or is it going to be for TV? So we were talking online. Like who it is. I think, I think, I think um, what's her name? That big fat commie? The, tr the birther? The truther? The truther, not the birther. She's a truther. Rosie McDonald's. I think she should play Barbara Bush, the Barbara Bush story. You know? And uh, we were going through them. And one of, the, one, of the, one of the people on Twitter, I forgot which one of you, pardon, my, pardon me, suggested uh, uh, Janine Garofalo as uh, Michelle Bachman. 
you know. And I was thinking Susan Sarandon as uh, uh, Pat Nixon. You know, we need we need someone we need someone um, really. Tr How about Margaret Cho as Laura Bush? That would be a really fair, balanced portrayal. So, um, yeah, those are some of my views. I thought last night's show was pretty good. I mean, obviously Mitt Romney did as well, because I got this lickety split. And, um, you know, you know, I'm just on some list. It's like when I suddenly got a letter from Sean Hannity, well, I mean, the Hannity people, Hannity Corp, wanting me to join in for an old-fashioned, you know, Fourth of July at the Jersey Shore or something. And it was like, how did I get on Sean Hannity's list? Go proud, are you at it again? Tammy Bruce probably did it. I wouldn't put it past her. So anyway, no sooner did I do, do a program where I actually infer that Mitt Romney might be a human being when I get an autographed photo. I thought Steve was quite good on last night's show. Oh, it was so funny. Steve mentioned this, and it didn't even register with me at the time because I was so hopped up on broadcasting that uh, Ricky Santorum uh, said that he'd like to be uh, Mitt Romney's vice president. Ixnay. N. <laughs> Am I invited? N. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, good Lord. I guess Rick Santorum is just like a like one of those um, etchy sketchies, and he can just shake it, and suddenly he's for Mitt Romney again. What a joke! What a jerk! And what a joke! So anyway, they they guess what else they found out? If Gingrich if Gingrich uh, j jumps out, uh, probably all the Gingrich people are going to Romney. Hello, hello. Thank you, Santorum. Thank you, Talk Radio, for shoving the knives in old Newt a couple of months ago. You think we forget that? Uh-uh. The revenge of the Newts. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a reason why people they, we didn't go to Centaurum. We don't like him. Sorry. Sorry, Rush. So, anyway... So then last night, after I was talking about how great uh, Brandon Darby's show is with um, with Lee Stranahan, how what a great uh, radio program they have, guess who came back on the air? I mean, I'm sure you know if you follow my Twitter stream, which sounds obscene, but you do. Um, Larry Larry O'Connor and Meredith Dake returned to the Larry O'Connor show last night. And you know something, you guys? I, I mean, I think Larry listens to me every now and then. Mr. O'Connor, this message is for you. You mean so much, and, and Ms. Dake as well. You guys mean so much to us. And not having you for the past several months, for several weeks, made the loss of Andrew even harder. It really did, because it felt like that whole wonderful part of our lives was gone. And having you guys back meant so much to so many of us. We just want you to know that. We love your show, and we love you, and you bring such fun and mischief and joy, and uh, you're, you're, you're the smartest uh, two on radio, if you ask me, and uh, even, even though you're a total rhino, Larry, but I still really love you, and I still really love your program, and I'm so glad you guys are back. Try to make it every night. We demand more. We want you on all the time. We want you to participate in the game of survival for our amusement. A Hunger Games for our amusement. That's how much we love you. So anyway, but I'm so glad they're back because it just, it just did all of our hearts so much good to hear you guys being silly and having a good time and um, means a lot. All right. Other than that, just another mode did nothing but try to sabotage me all day yesterday. And he's paying all this lip service that he's in Kyle's corner. I'll tell you, I'll believe that when I see it. 
Are you ready to give up your partner and enter an ex-gay lifestyle with a new wife? I don't think so, dude. So I don't know how close you plan on getting to Rachio. That's all I can say. I hope Kyle's having a wonderful time in Europe. Notice, Kyle, I haven't said what country you're in because I'm worried. And as I said to just another mo, I think that Kyle's doing uh, some special secret, top, top secret work for Michael Savage while he's in Europe. You know, Kyle has a little history with Michael Savage. Not many of you know that. Kyle's, uh, Kyle gets around, Kyle Raggio. He gets around, obviously. So anyway, he's going to come back next week, um, and uh, we'll see how he feels by then. We'll see what's happened by then. I just feel like Rick Santorum is just, like, wandering around, saying, just waving his hands, like, leave me alone! <laughs> he's just, like, walking home. He doesn't have enough money for, like, you know, for the bus, and he's walking home, like, leave me alone, I don't want to talk about it! That's <laughs> Rick Santorum right now. So those are some of my unedited thoughts. Those are some of, that's a little bit of my citizen punditry for America. The fact that and I went out and did nothing but bash the media and the New Black Panthers and Al Sharpton for their handling of the Trayvon Martin case. And we were so loud, everyone was staring at us and glaring. So we had fun with that in New York City. God forbid they have another opinion here allowed, you know. I am Breitbart. <laughs> we are Breitbart, darn it all. We're going to carry it on, darn it all. And for Brandon Darby, if you, in the unlikely event you ever hear this, don't you worry about someone else being uh, Andrew Breitbart. You just be Brandon Darby because that is spectacular. Okay, dude? Everybody's just fine. Keep on keeping on. Out of time. Bye.